taste. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah 40 and 10, I think it is. It had the same taste. One of the time, we got to make sure that my appetite changes. So I got to have a desire for the finer things. I got to have a desire for a better quality of life. Yes. You deserve better. I deserve better. I deserve a better church. I deserve better people. So I'm always hoping that better will be here. We have better things on our horizon. But better don't knock on the door. I have to make room for better. Yeah, yeah. I had to make adjustments for better. Yeah, right. I can say all day, I'm gonna do better. People, I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna do better. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do better, and then they go right back to whatever they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to make a room. You have to make adjustments. You have to change some things. Amen. Tell you that it's time for change. It's time for change. Yeah, you got to change some things. You got to be said. You got to be able to make up your mindset. I'm gonna look forward towards the things God has for me. Because you got to understand, if you want something you never had before, you have to be comfortable with letting go of what you had. Okay. Yeah. When we want something new, we have to be comfortable with letting go of the old. Yeah. And I'm here standing, wow. and you're ready to get done with this section. I'm standing here declaring to you unashamedly that the old things, the old ways, the old thoughts, the old people, the old places. The things that you should no longer be mindful of, the status quo, the way... The pro quo and the things that have always been in your life are simply not going to be effective or productive in this season anymore. You're in a new season. Well, you know, it's the beginning of New Year's, three weeks in and all this. I'm not talking about New Year's resolution. I'm trying to tell you, you're in a new season. The calendar has changed. Yes, yes, yes. But there is a word germinated on the inside of you. There's a word sure. that's in the fabric of this ministry. If you're here, if you've been underneath this word, there's something, a seed on the inside of you, an incorruptible seed that's yeah. challenging you to move forward, to, to ascertain, to apprehend the things that God has apprehended for you, for you to somehow reciprocate the same tenacity as he extended to you in the new birth. I'm here to tell you where we've been and where we are now is not where we're going. Yes, sir. Amen. Do you have enough vision to lift up your eyes mm. and stop looking around you? Yes. You got to tell your mind in spite of everything that's in your life. You got to speak to yourself and tell yourself. I know you got the same address. You don't have to be the same person. You can change. Amen. You know, some people, you know, sometimes you... You have to do simple stuff to change. Yeah. You know, how many know sometimes, I, when I'm driving a certain way all the time, sometimes I just go yeah. another route. Yeah. 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 Just for change. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm tired of going this route. It's quicker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the girls, the ladies that got their house, you know, they, they sometimes they, they don't get a new house right away if some of them get lucky. But, you know, for the most of us, we have to change furniture. There you go. <laughs> you don't have to change the dress. You just have to make some adjustments. Yes. They had to move the couch from this side to the west side to the east side. Amen. And, and when they get done moving, because my little wife does her little thing, I, I feel different. Yeah. We just moved the bed around in one of the rooms. I'm like, wow, this room is big. The, the light is shining right. Just because we moved the bed. Yeah. Broke the monotony. Yes, Change is that simple. Yes. Mm. There's hope in change. Amen. The scenery wants to change. Tell Tell you that God wants to change your scenery. God wants to change your scenery. Yeah, he does. He wants to change your scenery. <laughs> he wants to break the covenant of humdrumness. I ain't even a word. I'm making it up. <laughs> we just got a humdrum life. You know, humdrum. We come in, we put a check in at work, we leave the house, we leave the work, go home. Yes. Amen. And it's the same yes. cycles, yes. the same repetition, the same redundancy. Yes. Oh, you know, God. apostolic people are adventurous people. We think adventure is going to Bahamas. <laughs> we think adventure is, you know, going to an exotic place. No, 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 no. There's an adventure in us. Yes, yes sir. And that adventure in us wants to subdue things around us. It's an adventure to tell your mind to shut up. It's an adventure to tell your body, no, I'm not calling him tonight. Come on, man. Oh, come on, Buster. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's an adventure to say no speed down. All right. <laughs> I, I liquidated that for you. Come on, Buster. 
Yes. Yes. We got ten minutes. Because I want to go ahead and talk about Father's house before I stop. Okay. You got to help y'all, man. Yes, no. We got to leave that country. Thank you, That mindset. Yes. The boundaries, the limitations, yes. the thought processes, the paradigm. All of that is. We got to leave that paradigm alone. We got to say, let this mind be in us that was in Christ. God, I want, I have the mind of Christ on the inside of me. I can know things that I never could know before. I can see things that I never could see before. I can hear things that I could never hear before. That's why he told us, right, Paul? You know, we, we use scriptures and we try to justify our, our lack of desire to move into things of God. You know, we try to use scriptures. Religious people say uh, there's a way that seems, oh, no, not the way that seems right, but the, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Mm -hmm. You know. And so we stay constricted in that paradigm. But then we don't forget, we forget what Paul said. Paul told us something, right? 1 Corinthians 2, 7, uh, 8 and 9, right? Y'all know what the scripture said? Y'all know what it says? Oh, Lord Jesus. Put it on the screen. I know what it says. <laughs> Y'all wait on me to tell you. I ain't going to tell you. You can see it up for yourself. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 2, that's the New Testament. <laughs> uh, first Corinthians uh, 2 I, I can see if I can do something with that <laughs> nah, I can't do it. 2 and 8 9 I thought it was 9 and 10 but as it is written eyes has not seen ears heard it is in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him Next verse. But God. So there, there you go. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. We got to be seekers of the things of God. We can't justify ourselves. And use scripture that says that the, his thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. No, no, no. We have an opportunity to go beyond those barriers. We can step out of that country and say, hey, look. Eyes, ears hearts. But God by his spirit has revealed them unto us. That's why we got to tell ourselves I can't sell anymore. I can't sacrifice my convictions and vote for my comfort. I got to make up my mind that I got to lead this alone because you know, the best way I can tell you you, because you, if you don't come to terms with what I just said, you can't possess the future and keep the past at the same time. You can't possess the future and keep the past at the same time. That's why he told us, remember ye not the former things. And before the new things show up, he said, I'll show it to you. So new things just don't all of a sudden show up in your life. I'm talking about spiritual things. God can inform you. You can get a spiritual memo, <laughs> memo. <Yes. laughs> text message in the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, you can't necessarily open it up and understand it, but you know that God is sending a message to you. Yes. Uh, I know I am, man. Yes. I, I'm in this Baptist church. I can't get too many things going on right now. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you're going to leave your country, you must forsake your past and find your future, and you have to reconcile your future by removing the limitations of your past. Yes. You can reconcile your future before it shows up by forsaking your past. Yes. You can say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring myself in the position to walk into my future. I made up in my heart there's no enmity in me concerning my past. I'm coming to terms, I'm going to let the dead bury the dead. Because where I'm headed, I can't jeopardize my future because of my past. Because I won't allow it to be a commentary to my future. Amen? Ain't that as powerful to me, y'all? You got to tell yourself that. Tell yourself, tell yourself that we got to do that. We got to do that. We gotta do that. I know it don't sound good English, but tell them, y'all, we have to. The word of the Lord over your life is more important than your feelings. Come on. Yes. Your future is more important than your feelings. Yeah. You don't even know how you're going to feel in the future. That's right. That's right. But you got to trust. For real. You got to trust God for what you have and what's coming. Yes. So it's yes. all about faith. It's all about believing God. And you know, you got you know, you got to allow faith to arise in you. Yes. Faith
faith had to rise. That's why he that's why he, he went out not knowing where he was going, because he had faith. He said, okay, yeah, I'm gonna make some mistakes, but I still trust God. Yes. Yes. And we're gonna talk about the mistakes next week. Uh, uh I wanted to get somewhere, but uh but yeah, I, I, I can squeeze five more minutes out of this. <laughs> so we gotta get to the point to understand that we must be willing to take uncomfortable challenging and seemingly impossible steps of faith towards God and His promise. The promises He's spoken over our life. Knowing that He is committed to bring about positive changes yeah. in our life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, when you read scriptures like, fear not, little flock. Oh, it's your Father. Good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Luke 12 32, right? When you understand those things. But see, we we still, the reason why we don't have trust that God can lead us into our future is because we haven't known him as Father yet. We still know him as God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. He sent forth his spirit in our hearts to cry, Abba. Yeah. Most of us haven't developed a relationship with him enough to know that he's really, truly paternal. That he's really truly <laughs> caring for your soul. Yes. That you are really accepted in the beloved. Yes. I, I'm going to give you a little something. <laughs> God was speaking to me. <laughs> How did he put it? I'm working things out. He said, before I was lost in Adam, I was found in Christ. All right. All right. Uh -uh. That's what I said too. You know why? He's before the foundations of the world, the lamb was slain. So before I came in the earth in my earth suit, I was in Christ. I was in him. You know what that'll do for somebody that's struggling with sin? To find out that my place is secure in him because before I got lost in Adam, I was found in Christ. 